Hi, this is the overview video for chapter 2, the kinetic theory of gases. If chapter 1 reviewed what you already kind of knew from having taken chemistry, or if you haven't taken chemistry, that was the summary for what you have to know for physics, chapter 2 will now provide an important bridge between thermodynamics and physics. Well, the rest of physics. This is going to be a recurring theme in thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is an area of applied physics. There are no new fundamental laws in thermodynamics. Everything in thermodynamics can be derived from mechanical principles you learned in Physics 4A. Now, to do this, you do need models, a representation, an accurate representation of what the real world is like. For example, if you have some gas, you can measure pressure, volume, and temperature. But what is this gas really made of? Our really successful model for this is called molecular model of an ideal gas. And it can be represented by this figure, um, figure in figure 2.2, a hard sphere balls bouncing around. Of course, real molecules are more complicated than this, but in this model, we are simplifying certain aspects of reality in order to derive relationships between macroscopic quantities we care about, pressure, volume, and temperature. For example, chemistry in the 19th century by experiments and trial and error figured out something called the ideal gas law. Uh, many gases followed this relationship, which you saw in the plot, <laughs> where pressure and volume of a given gas were proportional to the temperature. And at a given temperature, pressure and volume were inversely proportional. This is in fact the origin of the absolute temperature scale. On the absolute temperature scale, Kelvin, zero Kelvin is the temperature where an ideal gas would have zero pressure and zero volume. Now real gases do become liquid at some point before they reach zero Kelvin. The difference between physics and chemistry, or many other sciences, is in physics. The driving question is, is this a fundamental law? Ideal gas law is an empirical law, and although a surprising number of real gases do follow it well, it is not a fundamental law. So the goal for a physicist is to ask and answer, can we derive this from a more fundamental law or more fundamental laws? This is where the molecular model comes in. It turns out we can derive the ideal gas law from first principles. And in the process, we can discover new meanings for the temperature. In your textbook, this derivation is done in section 2.2. Um, it's this set of drawings and these equations, you can read through it. There will be a separate lecture video for this derivation in a very similar but slightly different approach as in section 2.2. But for this video, the main takeaway of the derivation of ideal gas law under the molecular model of an ideal gas is equation 2.5. The product of pressure and volume is equal to one-third number of molecules of gas times mass of each molecule of gas times speed squared averaged. <laughs> it is a complex <laughs> equation. Um, now, speed of a molecule is not something readily measured macroscopically. But when you compare this with the ideal uh, the empirical ideal gas law, you see a meaning for the temperature. Equating the right-hand sides of the two equations uh, with the same left-hand side, you see that 
Boltzmann's constant times temperature is equal to one third mv squared average, or rearranging to express the average kinetic energy of a molecule. Average kinetic energy of a molecule is three halves kT. Temperature of a gas is directly related to the kinetic energies of the molecules in the gas. This relationship will be expanded using something called equipartition principle, equipartition theorem. And we will explore this more when we look at different heat capacities of an ideal gas in chapter 3. For now, I encourage you to read through chapter 2.3 for a fascinating discussion relating to statistical mechanics. Um, which is the upper division version of thermodynamics. But for now, these are the two key things that I want you to take away from chapter two. That is the ideal gas law, the empirical version, how that's used in various problem solving. You will see that in your homework. And the derivation of the ideal gas law using the kinetic theory of gases. Um, all right, that's all. The section 2.4 covers very good materials to know, especially Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. Um, if we are going deeper into statistical mechanics, we would cover it. But in the interest of time, we are going to skip it so that we can sp spend more time on chapters 3 and 4. Bye.